Hey, welcome back to Packers Playbook. I am Dusty Evo. With me as always, 97.3 The Game, John Kuhn. John, you missed a couple weeks ago. You get to talk about a win this time. How are you, sir? Man, I, I am fantastic, and it's it's great to have uh, a victory Monday, and uh, much like one earlier in the week, it comes uh, short-lived because we came here <laughs> Thursday on Thanksgiving. But, oh, man, were there some spectacular things on this film as we uh, got a chance to look at it. Most notably, I would say, is Matt LaFleur getting back to uh, his roots and having misdirection and deception as a major point of emphasis this week. Um, I'm sure you'll agree with me. There were a lot of yards and opportunities and big plays even left on the field with one of the better offensive performances of the season. Yeah, yeah, I thought uh, we're not even getting to a lot of this stuff. Obviously, we're only going to look at four plays, but I thought as far as how he set stuff up to use later, how he used some of what the the Chargers were doing to draw up some positive plays later, I thought, uh, I don't know about his best game of the season. I think he's had some very good ones, but I thought the, the way he sequenced plays and all this stuff, I thought he did a very good job this week. I think we're going to look at it a little bit uh, today. But yeah, I thought I thought overall, I thought LaFleur did a very good job this past week. And empty in the clip too, right? He, he showed a... Uh, a double screen tight end late that was unsuccessful. He showed a flea flicker that was unsuccessful. He had a couple big plays to Musgrave that were unfortunately unsuccessful for uh, numerous different reasons. But things that are out there now in the ether for the NFL world to see and prepare for when it comes to the Green Bay Packers. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's let's get to it. I will say that that we we will not talk about it. But that that last miss to Musgrave that just hit him in the hand beautiful that was something they tried earlier in the game as well and could not hit him on so that one breaks my heart they did not hit that but we're not here to talk about the sad stuff we're here to talk about the good stuff john we're going to start off with this one here we've got this uh reed sweep they use Jaden reed obviously very well in this game they're going to run him on this jet sweep little handoff behind you got dylan as the lead blocker just going around there for what ends up being a 15 yard gain sets up some nice things to come but john what do you see on this one well, first of all, this is something that they're from very familiar with. This is something that they've done with Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon in the backfield out of a 21 personnel. This is 11 personnel, and, and this is what Jaden Reed, and, and we began talking about it last week, what he brings to this offense, that little jack-of-all-trades, that dynamic of, of being a little bit smaller build, so he's quick, but he's also very strong of a runner, and because of that, you can use him in a Debo Samuel Ask tight roll and right here uh, just like they would do with Aaron Jones they're going to run him on a sweep here from starting at the outside position AJ Dillon as the lead blocker and, uh, and and this is very key because they run this motion quite a bit in their offense as we will continue to see as we look at some more plays but just another nice design play here by Matt LaFleur and AJ Dillon getting up to the second level making a block you see a couple wide receivers out there getting to their men, not getting holding calls, and just an overall greatly executed play here by this Green Bay Packer offense. Another explosive gain by this Green Bay Packer offense that has led the NFL in explosive gains the last five weeks of the season. Yeah, they looked really good. Honestly, one of the things I wanted to point out on this, one, one of my thoughts was they had Christian Watson on a little end around uh, later in the game that did not go well. I think one of the, one of the reasons you don't see those as successful, you don't have Christian Watson blocking. He can't block for himself. You can see as far as what he brings you as a wide receiver blocking, he stays on that block, able to kind of keep that open a little bit. Like you say, disengages without holding what Watson's able to give you on a lot of that stuff. And honestly, A.J. Dillon too. A.J. Dillon struggled with that, but him out of the backfield there kicking out the guy there too. I mean, we talked about this, what, a few weeks ago, John? Uh, they did not have a whole lot of blocking, good blocking on the run stuff, but we're definitely starting to see that come along. And that, even for Watson's struggles, he's been very, very good in this part of the game. Yeah, and uh, we mentioned this before here. Uh, the wide receivers earlier in the season, the reason the RPR, the RPO game struggled is because the blocking by the wide receivers on the outside with the P version of the RPO was not up to the standard that the Packers have been used to. I would say they're uh, starting to hit their stride right now as it comes to blocking on the perimeter. Absolutely. And before we go too further, John, I do want to point out that last week we did an entire episode devoted to Jaden Reed and how good he was. And then he had another good game. So, uh, so are we ahead of the curve on this? I don't know. It just, it felt good kind of seeing that after what we talked yeah, about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if we can notice it, I guarantee the coaches notice it as well. hundred percent, hundred percent. Johnny, got anything else in this one? You want to move to the next play? Let's move to the next one because they're, uh, they're, they're uniquely, uh, linked to one another. If you look, it's the exact same formation. It's the exact same personnel group. The motion starts off the exact same way. And this is what I mean by deception and misdirection out of Matt LaFleur. And this time, 
faking the sweep and using Aaron Jones on an inside kind of counter G or whatever uh, type of counter pull you want to call this. You get two pullers coming around as lead blockers for, uh, for Aaron Jones there. You see Elton Jenkins and then you see Luke Musgrave coming around the corner there getting ready to set up a, a, a good play here. Or is that Tucker Craft? I, I think that's Tucker Craft. I think that's Craft. Tucker Craft there coming around, setting this thing up. But this all derives off of making everything look the same to the defense so they can't get a beat within the first two seconds of a run play. Yeah, and you can see, I mean, 36 there too because they snap it here. If he recognizes this and sees this, he can be part of the run fit instead since that looks the same and they've already seen that. He follows him out, so you're moving that guy. That haven't blocked anyone. Honestly, this is one that I had tagged as well. First of all, I love the spinner stuff. It, it looks like you got the single wing with the the beautiful little fake and then spin back to the inside. This is something even without the blocking, even just the execution of the timing of that handoff is something I feel like they would not have been able to do early in the year in terms of how kind of disjointed some of that felt. Seeing some of this, uh, I thought was very encouraging in terms of some of the timing and the execution of this kind of thing. Let's play it one more time from the backfield here because I just want people to be able to see what does this motion actually do? Well, it, it keeps the defensive line from being able to penetrate. It keeps the linebackers from being able to come downhill. Watch how everybody on the Chargers are moving laterally. And mm -hmm. with moving laterally, it allows the Green Bay Packers offensive line. Look at that. All their feet, all the Packers offensive line and feet are two to three yards down past the line of scrimmage at this point in time. That is moving the wall, not just the man. That is moving the wall and allows Aaron Jones to be able to press the hole, find the hole, and burst through the hole. Yeah. And I mean, and again, uh, then what Josh Myers, who's come under heat kind of gets the seal there for he gets that cut back there. And this is something, I mean, even the beginning of the year, they got, they had the good rushing, good, good rushing game against the bears. Uh, but even then that was more kind of holding their own at the line. And then, you know, Jones was making stuff happen after the fact, the fact that they're pushing, that's something we've seen more of in the past couple of weeks too, like kind of not necessarily owning the line of scrimmage, but getting push forward, opening those gaps as opposed to just moving laterally offensive line is looking really good here. Uh, John, you want to go to the next one? Uh, you want to get any more on this one? No, let's move to the next one. All right, man. Beautiful. We got the Jaden Reed touchdown here. It's again, Christian Watson, another good block sprinting over to get in front, to get the, to, to kind of move there. It doesn't end up blocking anyone, but I love seeing the hustle there. John, what do you got on this one? So uh, now that you got, and, and these are all in succession. So uh, Jaden Reed sweep first, then you got the misdirection to Aaron Jones second. Now you got Aaron Jones in the backfield. You have a, uh, I'll call it a stagnant kind of uh, formation here. No motion, no shift. And uh, now you have the Chargers thinking about what this play could be. So now they're going to read and react at the snap of the ball. And if you watch, watch how their linebackers engage with the offensive linemen as they see them come out there. They choose their play side shoulder as they watch Aaron Jones go to the left there. And Jaden Reed comes around on the reverse you got the nice lead block out there. Um, obviously makes it look like outside zone. We'll see it from the other angle. But look at this downfield block right here. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that's Malik Heath, is it not? I believe it is. I believe you're right, yeah. It, and, and Malik Heath is now starting to turn into the dog on the outside. We saw it a little bit in the preseason out of him, and now we're seeing it in the regular season where this guy's not afraid to go down. We saw him get a pancake on Khalil Mack on a chip block a little later in the game. And this is an absolute uh, gem of a block down there on a safety. That's a pretty hard safety to block. And he's able to get in there and get to his man and be able to control his man so that Jaden Reed can get into the end zone. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll see that. There's Musgrave leaking out there. Obviously, they leave the end guy unblocked. Well, this he comes is, down. Looks like split flow, right? And it's a release block there. Yeah, Dusty, let me throw this out there. So because this is the split flow that we've seen the Packers run so many times, if this defensive end tries to collapse and spill this, then the tight end runs around him. If this defensive end plays upfield, that defensive end has to block him at that point in time. So this is a decision being made by Luke Musgrave in the backfield. Are we going to have leverage to get around this defensive end? Is he coming too shallow with the line of scrimmage to be able to defend Jaden Reed? If he is, I'll bypass him and look for the first man down the field. A lot of times it'll be the corner that's trailing Malik Heath. He will catch on to the play and you end up getting the corner. In this case, Malik Heath plays off so well that the corner stays with him. Malik Heath gets the safety, and Luke Musgrave is a bonus man for the backside safety, which is really the block that ends up springing this for a touchdown. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so we go. We got So he's, he's leaking out. And Musgrave, first of all, Heath there, so he's dragging the guy with him. 
who doesn't even know what's going on behind him. He's going to end up blocking that guy. So we get Musgrave. We'll give you a seal there. We'll give you a seal here. And then just all that room to the outside there. You give that much space for a guy like Jane Reed. He's going to make big things happen for you time after time. Without a doubt. Yeah, we've seen his his speed, his quickness, decision-making there, but with that blocking on the outside there. I mean, like you said, that's 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 the difference between Musgrave able to get out, sealing that. If he misses that block or if Heath doesn't block him, that's the difference between a touchdown and still a decent game, but you're looking at, what, 10 to 15-yard gain or something. But that downfield blocking really makes a difference there. John, you want to hit the last one here? Yeah. So, uh, so now we've seen – what motion can do and how mirroring up plays can lead to success in different ways. Uh, we, we've seen how um, switching up formations and then uh, using an end around would be considered maybe a trick play can do to open some things up. Well, how about the game within the game? And this is, this is a hurry up play. And this is something you won't notice on the all 22, which is what we're watching right now. The green Bay Packers had just run the ball with AJ Dillon on first down. They had gotten two yards. They had known that they were going to run this play on second down because the Chargers had a problem getting adjusted to this personnel group lining up in this empty formation. So this is the empty formation here that the Chargers were having trouble lining up to all game long. And the Green Bay Packers, knowing this, called two plays basically when they called the A.J. Dillon run. They called the A.J. Dillon run. Matt LaFleur hurries them up to the line to get this play called and get this play ran knowing that the Chargers would have a hard time getting lined up. And if you look at it, it's it's just a little fitch. It's a fade with a hitch or a fade with an in on the outside here. And Romeo Dobbs gets himself a perfect pick, linebacker on cornerback crime right there, in for the <laughs> touchdown. So Matt LaFleur not only scheming up the Chargers with motions, Matt LaFleur not only scheming up the Chargers with end around, what we call uh, trick plays, and now Matt LaFleur scheming up the Chargers with the game within the game, and a little hurry up and before they can ever get set, get the play called. Yeah, I think that's Kendricks. You can even see this right before the ball is snapped. He's not even in position. So you get the confusion there. So it's not only just a linebacker and wide receiver. He's trying to get over to get Dylan. And you get that, like you said, that pick there, throw up the mailbox, go up. Just a tremendous catch by Dobbs as well. If you want to look out for that from the other side, you want to talk about snatching a ball of the air. My goodness, dude. And you know, as this Packers offense gets more in sync and as this Packers offense continues to have these creative ways of uh, mirroring plays to one another, keeping defenses on their heels, that allows these young players to play faster, more physical, with less doubt in their mind, and allows guys like Romeo Dobbs to go up in high point footballs like that. It allows for bigger holes for running backs to run through, as we saw with Darren Jones. And allows guys like Jaden Reed just to play fast, to take that thinking out of the football game. We saw a lot of that here with the Chargers, and yet we saw a lot of plays that left a lot of yards on the field. Dusty, I don't know about you, but the more I watch this Packers offense on film, the more I get encouraged that a real breakout game is coming in the future. I've, I said this, I think, four games into the season. I've, it's even more true now. Like through four games, I feel like they were three plays away from being just an insane offense, just whether that was miscues. Now it seems like the consistency is back at the very least. It seems like they're they're operating better, but you're still having – again, you had the you had the Musgrave misfire that just hit off his hand. You had uh, the one to Dobbs that was a little underthrown. You had one to Watson that was a little overthrown late off a, off a little uh, hitch and go there. It feels like I've been saying this all year, and they're inching there. It feels like they're so close, dude. We said you get the athleticism; those young guys starting to iron things out. It is very hard to watch this team and not get excited right now. I think. Yeah, we, we, we got a big game coming in the future. Now, a tough one this week. That's going to be an incredibly tough environment to play in. But this Green Bay Packers offense is definitely trending in the right direction. A lot of good things to come. A thousand percent, a thousand percent, John. You got anything else for this week? Other than uh, happy Thanksgiving to you, Dustin. Happy Thanksgiving to you too, brother. Have fun at the game. Uh, we'll see you next week.